This is Arc Omega, a massive overhaul mod with over 200,000 custom creatures. There are dodos made from metal, lightning wyverns made from stone, and dinos with epic abilities that help you define your destiny. I have 100 days to complete this Omega modded adventure. So, let's go. Here we are once again, starting fresh on a new map, scratching my arm because of the sus rash I might have attracted from a weird night out. This might be a weird place to spawn. That's because we are on the modded map, Hope. We start off parachuting down to earth, pondering our entire life choices. Once landed, we start our typical arc journey by collecting stones and punching trees to craft our very first tools. Once we gather our first tools, we start to gather resources as our immediate goal is to set up a safe base as everything in this Omega mod can and will one shot your life out of existence. While out gathering, we run into one of my Patreons, Sparks. He offers us a dodo, but I cannot accept any help this early in my 100 days. I didn't know you were in the server. Hey, bro. No, you keep that. You, no, no, no. I'm not, I'm not going to take it. It's all good. It's all good. I got to play solo. I got to do this legit. So we move on. We find this location on the side of a cliff, which feels rather safe from dinos spawning. So we set up our initial base and make it out of wood. Once we have our foundations placed and one layer of walls, we then place down our Omega bench. We then find this Fiomia, and to me, it looks like some easy meat and easy hide. So we go on to kill it. But instead of dying to my spear, it decides to jump off this cliff. With no meat or hide on us, we run down to the beach in search of something that we can slaughter for our own benefit. And we find these dodos. So of course, we end their lives with a quick stab to the face. May they rest in peace back at base we finished the walls and the roof to close it in so you know nothing could kill us that easily with our base set we lay down some forges so we could start smelting some metal once the metal's cooked we then lay down a smithy i then find some crystal right next to our base and it will now allow us to make an awesome spyglass which will be a massive help in this entire journey but first, let me introduce you to my friend, David. David is from today's sponsor, War and Order. Now, David needs our help as he keeps getting bullied by this rather beautiful warlord. Harness the power of these epic lords that will lead your army into battle and tame yourself one of these ferocious beasts like this blazing phoenix or this ice cold frost dragon. You have the ability to create your own destiny by building monumental structures with resources that you have gathered. Build a massive fantasy army and explore this vast open world. Once you have grown a powerful army, you can then take on the world with real-time PvP battles. Rally alongside your allies and take down your most fearsome foe. In addition to this epicness, there are also two mini games available. Breach Defense Lines and my personal favorite, Tower Defense with infinite zombies. Take down these bumbling idiots before they eat your brains out. So please come prepared and join myself and David in game by using my link in the description below. And to say thank you, you will also receive a gift pack worth $60. Thank you, War and Order, for sponsoring this video. So back to it. We then continue by making friends the best way we know how with a solid club to the face. These dodos are crucial for making eggs, which we can turn into kibble for us to progress through to taming Omega dinos. So with that, we finish this day off by crafting a kibble machine, an extremely important tool to help us craft kibble for all the modded dinos on this map. Day two starts with us building a staircase for a little bit of easier access to the beach. We found out that this was gonna be a little bit more trickier than I thought. So I ended up just placing a ladder down for now, which we found out later was probably a bad idea. I then go ahead and turn our base from wood to stones so the big bad wolf can no longer blow us down so next on the agenda is to tame ourselves a flying mount we head down to the beach and spot this phoenix pteranodon we bowl him and knock him out then i realize i don't have the right kibble to tame him so i head back to base and make mythical kibble from our kibble machine but on our way to return to the pt we get chased down by this raptor made from stone we do our very best to lead him away running around like a madman on the beach until we finally lead him away and continue taming our pt once tamed we find a safe spot that we can name our new pt we named him guacamole obviously because he's green and like you know the refreshing avocado dish then make him a saddle and fly away Day 3, we explored around our local area on Glockamoli. We found some obsidian that we know we'll definitely need, so we harvested what we could. We returned back to base and we placed down this fabricator, then ventured out to explore some more. I spotted a bunch of oversized ants and figured they are going to be an easy kill. Boy, was I wrong. Within a short time, these ants ate my guacamole for an entree and then ate me for the main course. This mod is definitely going to be a bit more harder than I thought. I ventured back to the beach to get my gear back and get revenge for guacamole, but I accidentally got the attention of this big scary Rex. Oh, we're dead. We're dead. 
I think we're going to avoid the beach for now. Instead, we stayed at the safety of our base and crafted this soul terminal. And we placed it down while adding our dodo so they could passively produce eggs for us. Day 4, right off the rip, we tamed the spectral tech Stego. Once tamed, we test out his special ability and he basically just turns invisible. I then tamed this knockout Fiumia. I won't be naming these dinos as they're basically just egg producers for us to help us get to the next tier of dinos. I did put a saddle on this Fiumia and take her out for a ride. Turns out she's scared of little Lystros. What a pussy. I then spot a level 145 PT right next to our base. So of course, we shoot it in the head and enslave it to do our bidding. Side note, it'll probably die like everything else I tame. I then explore more of the map to see what dinos are around. I then perch on the safety of this cliff to handle something IRL. Ah, uh, this was a pretty bad idea, but we did learn an important lesson. Nowhere is safe. Once respawned, I figured now is a good time to make ourselves a flak armor, which will hopefully help us against everything. Unfortunately, it didn't help us against this uncontrollable Pachyrhinosaurus. Ah, <sighs> this is getting hard. We ended this day off by finishing a complete stone staircase down to the beach as our last wooden ladder had been destroyed. Day 5, the Ark Gods had graced us with this Ice Storm Pteranodon, so of course I tamed this elemental bird. Once tamed, we named him after one of my Patreons, Sparks. Hopefully this one doesn't die. With our bird Sparks, we can now go and collect my dead body from up on this perch. I then discovered a decent strategy for this mod. The most important items to progress in this mod are Souls and Essence. They are crucial to craft a lot of the items in this mod. So with our flyer, I fly close to wild donos that are fighting, and when one or multiple die, I then collect some free Souls and Essence from the kill without having to risk my own life as i'm definitely not prepared to I need take that on right now day six we head out to find some omega dinos to tame so we can start generating eggs now let me explain how omega works there are 12 tameable variants of creatures to tame with all different abilities and stat multipliers then there are six tiers of each variant that increases stats as you progress through the tiers now to progress through the tiers you need a specific kibble in order to tame that specific tier and variant of dino now with that all explained let's go out and find some dinos to tame our first dino we luckily find is this element parasaur which its poop is literally element this is an extremely lucky early game find right next to our stairs we tame this guardian controller raptor and then soon after it we get attacked by this wind elemental flying ant elemental. so instead of killing it we befriend her so she would be a great egg layer day seven we find this cosmic starfire pt and cosmic flying dinos are seriously op so we knock it out and while we wait for it to tame we find this teleporter pt so we knock this one out as well i've decided at this point we're gonna need a lot of pts as you know they kind of keep dying on me completely not my fault whilst we were patiently waiting for our pts to tame our nemesis the uncontrolled controllable patchy came back to ruin our day we did escape with our lives but the starfire pt wasn't so lucky fortunately our teleporter pt survived and successfully tamed i then took sparks out to gather some more souls and essence but then i got too close to these pack of dinos and this happened oh what the hell what the hell wow i ran back to collect my body then realized there was an alpha raptor close to my body so i quickly run up and collected my gear and hightailed it out of there as quick as i possibly could i was grateful and super lucky that i had already tamed a backup pt so we went back out on this teleporter pt but was soon quickly destroyed by an overpowered bronto with an extreme reach into the sky oh bro not again oh you I returned once again to collect my gear on the safety of my guardian raptor. I got my gear back easily, but then I got a little overconfident by getting way too close to this Bronto that uh, smacked my raptor out of existence. Oh no! No! Oh man! Day 8, I tamed this rather sus looking Pearl Dodicarus. With this, it'll poop out Silica Pearls and Black Pearls, so that's a massive win in my books. I then spotted this level 106 Siren PT. So I knocked it out, but while I was waiting for it to tame, this Diplo was getting rather close to our new PT friend, and I was concerned it may kill it. So I got its attention and led it away. Hey, look at me, I'm getting good at not- Why am I stuck? Oh, never mind. Oh my god! We then fetched our PT and took him back to a safe place to name him. We named this bird Zools, again after one of my Patreons. Day 9, my base had an unwanted visitor, a super aggressive, uncontrollable Pteranodon. This thing was relentless and killed me multiple times. This pest just wouldn't leave me alone, but after a bit of time, eventually it just disappeared. But as you can see from the death beacons, it won this battle. I then knew I needed something strong to help defend our base. So I ventured out somewhere that we figured we would be able to get something that we could tame in this early game that's going to be powerful enough for us to be able to hold it down for now. We went to the Wyvern Nest. With our PT's special ability as a siren, this could make 
make things a little bit easier. You see, the Siren Dinos can pacify dinos and they will not attack you for a short period of time. We then went in and snatched this Fire Wyvern egg and flew off as fast as we could with a barrage of very angry Wyverns hot on our tail. Thankfully, we did make it back to the semi-safety of our base. Day 10 and I tamed this Ovi Raptor, which should help us with better egg production. I then decided I needed to hatch my Wyvern egg, so I placed down these torches and then my Wyvern egg. And while I wait for it to hatch, I then went out to tame this reflective trike. But because I'm an idiot, I ran out of ammo. I made my way down to the beach to see what I could spot, but I was spotted by an Omega Teleporter Raptor, and it was hungry for some lunch, and human was on the menu. I did my best to run away, made my way up the stairs, but then so did the Raptor. These guys are really smart. Since I wanted to avoid my immediate area, I then took my PT and went to go explore until I remembered my Wyvern egg had probably hatched, and it has. So I claimed it and put it outside to grow because this big ass beast would likely not fit in my base. I now knew I needed some more resources if I was going to thrive in this 100 days. So I set out to find some cementing paste and I found these beaver dams amongst the swamp area. I was pretty nervous to gather these because we already know I don't have the best luck when surviving in the easiest of scenarios. But we made it out alive with some cementing paste and I was really happy. Later on in this day, I tamed a high level lightning storm trike. Things were starting to look up as we were finally making some good progress. Day 11, we knocked out this beta windstorm theory, and while it was knocked out, a spectral parasaur came to say hello. So we shot it in the face to enslave it also. Moving out the tears was rather satisfying. After all, we were starting to make progress. With our newfound confidence and feeling great, we then spent the rest of the day just exploring this map. We also stole another wyvern egg, because now, yeah, we're the boss. Day 12, we hatched our second wyvern egg. At least now, our first wyvern won't get lonely, unless one of them dies. Because companionship is definitely important. We then went AFK until one of our wyverns grew up, so we could ride it and make further progress. Day 13, we took our wyvern out to test his might against some of the creatures in this world. After about 10 minutes, he got pretty beat up, so we returned back to base and swapped him out for our PT Zools. We then tamed this beta psychosis theory, which turned out to be quite a beast when taking on other creatures. So now we can collect quite a few more souls and essence with ease. Side note, rage dinos, the red ones, have a 6x stat multiplier and are often great offensive dinos, which basically means that they're just mass murderers that like to kill things, so we prefer them on our side rather other than on the other side. We named this red tickle monster Atlas after one of my loyal Patreons. Day 14, we took Atlas out to farm some souls and essence. This was going to be so much easier now being a much more powerful creature. We even killed our first Omega Dino, which once they die, they drop an Omega Soul of their particular variant. And killing these compies was rather satisfying. Day 15, we started off by extending our base design by placing these foundations down. But when I ran out of stone, I then had to take our Pearl Dodick out to go gather some more stone. It's kind of sus running out on a creature that resembles semen. There were a few dinos out there that looked like they wanted to swallow my dodic. So I decided to take out our rage theory to clear them out. But I ran into this self-destructive raptor and this happened. <laughs> Losing this theory did set us back. But on the plus side, we were lucky enough to get some eggs from her and can now tame an alpha level rage dino. So it's not all that bad. Day 16, our luck was looking up because we found this alpha rampage ice wyvern. We had to tame this. So I set up a good old fashioned Captain Fat Dog style trap, got the raging beast's attention and lured it into the trap. <laughs> Look at that chat. Look at that. Look at that mother sucker. Oh my God. That's textbook. That is textbook trapping right there. Whoa, don't get me. Once tamed, we named this guy Sir Douche. Again, after one of my awesome Patreons. We then went out to go and find out what kind of power we have just obtained. And man, this guy is going to help us step our game up. So now we can definitely make much more progress. Day 17, we continued to extend our base. I wanted to move all of our main base over to this location. So I started by building our foundations. I laid down these foundations with this area going to be our main base area with all of our crafting stations and this area will be our greenhouse. I wanted to try a little bit of a different design than usual. We did also get lucky and found this Anki right by our base so I tamed it so we could have a decent metal gatherer on our side. Day 18 we farmed a lot of metal for the sake of progress. 
<laughs> okay, that's enough with the progress thing. I'll stop. Day 19, we had a little bit of a water and a fertilizer problem. I went out to solve that problem by taming this little big poop beetle. Once the fertilizer problem was solved, we then went on to the water problem. I could have built pipes from the beach up to here, but again, I wanted to try something a little bit different. So I built these four water reservoirs as it does rain quite a lot on this map. With these problems out of our way, it's time to start enclosing our base by putting some walls up. But I think it looks a little bit better with some glass walls because now we're looking bougie. Day 20, we filled up our new base with some of the necessary crafting benches that we're going to need along the way. We then took our trike out to harvest a ton of narco berries so we could start crafting some high high tier tranks so we can start taming some high tier dinos and i wanted to try and find some vegetable seeds for our farm we were successful in gathering narco berries but not so successful gathering some seeds so instead we took out sir douche to farm some souls and essence since essence is an important ingredient for us to craft these high tier trank darts day 21 we needed to make ourselves a chem bench but we didn't have enough cementing paste so we flew over to the swamp area to find some beaver dams once we arrived we stole some cementing paste from these stupid overgrown fur balls they got pretty angry but sir douche iced them because he's cold like that we then arrived back at base with our stolen cementing paste and crafted ourselves a chem bench and now that we're all set up for success we're gonna need some epic dinos to join our family while out finding our family members we found my dad he said he went to go get milk but instead he's just chilling on the side of a cliff he lied yeah he's a colossus trike he's that big guy i wouldn't mess with him once tamed we rode our daddy we feel safe now that daddy's here day 22 we left our dad at home hopefully he stays there this time and we went out because we discovered we could harvest citronel from the redwoods so we grabbed what we needed went back to base and planted the seeds that we gathered from it day 23 we needed to start gathering honey for the higher tier kibble we put on our ghillie outfit so we could stay undetected from the bees and then flew out to the thick jungle area to find these beehives we stole some honey from this beehive that seemed to piss off quite a few bees but because they're stupid they couldn't see me as i'm disguised as a bush i think it's probably better to have our own queen bee back at base so i then destroyed this beehive and stalked this idiot queen bee i snuck through the shrubs to passively tame this queen and once within range i stuffed this rare flower down her throat and made this queen bee my bitch back at base i set this queen bee up and turned her into a beehive to gather our very own honey i then went to go visit two of my friends on the server as they were trying to tame this omega fire alpha wyvern day 24 we spotted this miracle morella tops and apparently they perform miracles once killed so i killed it and it gave the entire server a crop growth speed multiplier. Next, we tamed this prime tier rage parasaur, making ourselves one step closer to a mega. We finished this day by building ourselves a little hut down by the beach. This hut is going to have one purpose, and that's to brew beer. Day 25, we went out and we tamed this beta singularity tech parasaur, this pearl therizino. And when the sun went down, we tamed this taming triceratops. Day 26, we killed this element Enki. And this is where we discovered once you harvest their bodies, you get a lot of element from them. We then went to the redwoods and found this harvesting thylacolio. So I went to knock it out with a trank dart and accidentally killed it. Following up after that fail, we did run into these two Paragon Dinos. Paragon Dinos are essential for the mid to late game in Omega. Once you kill one, they drop a soul and you can use that soul to Paragon your Dino, which will then double its base stats. Day 27, I tamed this farming turtle and I named him Tyler. They're really handy to put around your crops because they can collect poop, convert it to fertilizer and distribute it to all the crop plots. And if you put some unstable water in them, they water the crops as well. I also created this S plus gardener so she can harvest all of our crops passively while we're not online. I also placed down these triangle foundations right next to the farm. I really don't remember why I did this. With all the base stuff done, I went out to explore and kill more dinos. But apparently, uh, Sir Douche decided to kill me. Day 28, we found this ultimate frenzy triceratops and I had to tame him. We are one step away from being able to tame Omega Rage Dinos. But there was one problem. I didn't have any ultimate kibble on me and we are not close to base. So instead, I jumped on Sir Douche, picked up this trike and went back to base and left him there while we made some more tranks. Big brain moves. Day 29 and we had to test this ultimate rage dino out. And I won't lie, this was pretty impressive for where we're at in this game. We ultimately just put this dino away because really we're after its eggs so we can craft some omega kibble. I saw this black obsidian dino on the beach. So Sir Douche breathed this stinky cold breath on him. 
kill them so we could harvest a massive amount of obsidian day 30 and we tamed this alpha supernova void worm we named this guy Waitali after another patreon now i have to say this guy looks really damn cool and because he's a cosmic creature he does this supernova attack that does some crazy aoe damage now even though he's really cool he wasn't really our flavor so we got back on sir douche and continued our journey which might have been a mistake because i think sir douche hates me right now Day 31, I was feeling kind of sad about my relationship with Sir Douche right now. So I just continued working on extending my base even more. We just wanted to extend the front of our base just a little bit. I also made the stairs going down to the beach a little bit more wider and finished off the day by putting a glass roof on our base. Day 32, we attempted to take Sir Douche out once again. Hopefully he doesn't hate us still. <gasps> Well, I guess that answers that question. Okay, let's try this once again. But this time, we're not going to travel that far. We're flying over to our Omega Beacon so we can summon in a high-tier Rage Dino. Now, it is completely random, but we summoned in an Ultimate Frenzy Void Worm. This isn't too bad. We really wanted to tame this one, but first we had to knock it out. I didn't know that Void Worms had this special attack that knocks you off your Dino. We had to trank it out on foot, but then I started getting attacked face-on by the Void Worm. And Sir Douche didn't want to help. We have a love-hate relationship. I love him, and he hates me. Round two of tranking this Void Worm out, we finally knocked it out, and we successfully tamed it. We named her Jenny. You know, short for Jennifer, but a little bit more hip. Now, I'm assuming Jenny being an ultimate rage dino, she'll do some significant damage. And yeah, 84,000 is pretty significant for this early game. Day 33, we just spent the day hanging out with our girl Jenny. I'm starting to feel a real bond growing here. Something that me and Sir Douche don't seem to have. Day 34, we took Jenny out on a mass murdering spree, destroying all the dinos that we could possibly find. Look, we need to collect their souls in essence, okay? And then Jenny did it once again. She killed us. We gave Jenny a second chance and went back out on her. After all, she does look pretty cool. And we found this prime starfire Tyranodon. But as I went to tame it, I forgot about its special ability. So yeah, we died. I returned back on my red wyvern Sir Douche to find that the Starfire PT was already knocked out. So he successfully tamed a high level cosmic dino. And we named this gentleman Broseph. Kind of like Joseph, but like bro Seth. Day 35, we took our new Tyranodon out to go see what it could do. And its AoE attack is a great way to farm souls and essence. I can see the benefit in cosmic dinos. So we found this cosmic direwolf and you know, I had to tame that one too. We named this blue and gray fluffball John. Now look at our friends, Broseph and John. Our powerhouse collection is starting to look pretty good. Day 36, we wanted to add another creature to our cosmic dino collection. And we found this prime starfire Skrillosaur. He was a bit of a hassle to knock out as he kept running around, but we finally got there in the end. We knocked him out, but as we were about to leave, we realized that there was another unique dino stuck in these rocks. Now, unique dinos come with two different types and a fancy cool looking skin. This particular one is a paragon and a controller. Now that we have two OP dinos knocked out, we went back to base to get the required kibble and returned to tame them. The Skrillosaur, once it woke up, we named it Javier. And Pride, we left it as Pride because that's a pretty cool name anyway. Day 37, we flew around on Broseph just causing mass destruction. This AoE attack is pretty damn deadly. We then found our first Omega Dino, this red turtle but it's it's our first omega dino so we have to tame it once tamed we return back to base and then explored around our local area to see what this omega brutal dino could do and i was expecting a little bit more than this but after all he's just a turtle so yeah day 38 we chase down this ultimate cosmic spino taming this will mean we're one step away from being able to tame ourselves an omega cosmic dino once we tamed this Spino, we just put her away. We didn't bother naming her because we only need her for her eggs. Day 39 and we had one simple mission. Try and tame another giant bee for another beehive. We started by trying to break down this beehive. Once we finally did, no giant bee came out. So then we went to the jungle biome to try and break down this beehive. But once again, no giant bee came out. So instead, we just ended the day off on Broseph, just causing mass destruction like we like to do. Day 40 and we haven't given up on our mission. We're still on the hunt for a giant bee to tame. So we lined up this beehive and we broke it. We found the second one and again, we got another giant bee out of it. Trying to tame them was kind of difficult. Our first strategy was to try and sneak up on them to tame them, but that wasn't that effective. So instead I just tried to charge it and see what would happen. Turns out to be quite the successful strat. Placing these beehives down on my base was rather satisfying. 
Day 41, we took a break from exploring the map and we just worked on our base. I put these behemoth gates out so I could start placing our teams out and try and keep them a little bit safe. Then I placed down all these foundations to try and get some more space for all of our teams to chill out in the yard. Day 42, we were reminded that even the smallest creatures in this mod are quite deadly. But fortunately for us, there was this Omega Supernova Stegosaurus right by our base, so we could power up so nothing else could kill us. Day 43, I now wanted to tame more Omega Rage Dinos, and as luck would have it, we found this Omega Brutal Cal... Uh, whatever it's called we knocked this beast out and then once it was tamed we named this beauty von again after one of my awesome patreons we then tested von out to see how much damage it could possibly do close to base he was doing some pretty good damage but then we pumped his stats up and now he is easily obliterating his enemies we got a message from another tribe on the server that they were fighting a desert titan so i went out to watch their fight we were on sir douche and i was feeling confident so i thought i might lend a hand and oh boy was this a mistake we lost so douche and because i'm really smart i came back on brosif our cosmic pt and then we got struck by lightning and died again alongside with brosif day 44 we mourn the death of our fallen friends so douche and brosif Well, now they're dead, let's move on. We went out to go visit some of the other people's bases that we have in this server. And yes, right there is a Colossus Titanosaur. Yeah, that thing's pretty massive. This is also the massive base owned by Atlas and Raz, which you'll see both of those players quite a lot later on in this video. Day 45, we took off from base on Zul's our PT and spotted this Omega Gamma Ray Trike right on the beach of our base. We couldn't pass up an opportunity to tame a strong beast like this. We kept shooting this trike and he wasn't too happy about it. So unhappy, in fact, he killed us. Zul's also died to a fluffy raptor sorry Zul's. in the end we successfully tamed this trike and added yet another dope creature to our team day 46 atlas and raz helped me tame this omega starfire dimorph yeah the one stuck under his wing i shot him and then this happened oh crap i forgot about that we eventually ended up taming him and we named him timothy then we took him out to fly around the map Yes, you can fly Dimorphs in Omega. I finished this day off by taming this Omega Cosmic Microraptor and named her Ethel after a teacher that was really annoying because Microraptors are really annoying. Day 47, we took Timothy into the Aberration Cave. And since a crazy amount of Seekers spawn down there, we can now mass murder all of them in order to gather their souls and essence. Day 48, I thought it might be a good idea to fight a boss. Being that we had an Omega Starfire Dino, I figured its special Starfire ability would help us, but we got caught in the crossfire of another battle. We got set to stone and thrown in the water, which means I get dismounted. The boss came over and then killed me swiftly. We respawned and I noticed that Timothy hasn't died yet. Uh, never mind. I figured now we might as well summon in an Omega Rage type Dino that we can tame. We got extremely lucky and this Omega Rage Dino pick of this was summoned. We built a trap for it, but we couldn't get it in. Instead, we just used it to protect us and shot it from the inside out. Once tamed, we named this girl Ashley. Since this was so successful, we tried it again and summoned in an Omega Raptor. This time, we got this idiot into our trap and then tamed it. We named this girl Sharon after my crazy aggressive auntie that sounds like a raptor when she screams. Oh, and I almost forgot we needed to put down a tombstone for Timothy. We didn't know him for long, but he still was quite precious to us. And how cool does our baboon look, by the way? Day 49, and it's time that we start stepping up our base. So we start off by changing these stone behemoth gates into glass behemoth gates so we can kind of see outside. Then I placed down this tech replicator. So then now we can start playing around with some tech gear. I followed up by placing down a tech shield as well. So now we can start placing all of our dinos out so we know what we kind of have now. I feel like we're starting to collect a lot. I also placed down this S plus mutator. We're going to get a lot of use out of this later. Day 50, we started this day off with a fresh new haircut. Then we went out on Jenny to go and find some loot chests. Some of them were pretty good. Some of them we couldn't open yet. After that, we grabbed Ashley and then went on a murderous rampage. Seems to be a popular theme in this video. Gotta love that things must die for us to thrive. Day 51, I forgot to log off and sat here on my baboon for most of the day. Day 52, we went back to the Omega Beacon, this time to summon in an Omega Cosmic Dino that we could tame. We did get lucky and an Omega Antimatter Raptor spawned in. We easily knocked this out and named this Blue Beauty Marcus. We then took Marcus out to test his strength. It looks like he's about to die. Whoops, we died instead. 
Marcus was still alive when I respawned, so I quickly ran down on Ashley to try and save him. Fortunately, Ashley is so powerful, it took out the swarm of dinos trying to feed on Marcus. Day 53, we traveled back to our Omega Beacon, but this time it was to summon in a boss. We sent out our current most powerful dinos and started the summon. I was really nervous that this could end bad and we would lose everything. We took this boss on with all of our might, chomping away at his health bit by bit. 3.8 million health, we were still ahead. 2 million health and Javier was not looking good. 500k, 44k, we defeat our first boss solo. And we didn't lose a single dino. Things are starting to look up. Day 54 and uh, I did it again. I forgot to log off. Uh, my bad. Day 55, we saw this stupid Alpha Comet PT trying to walk through our shield. I thought to myself, how stupid is this guy? Then I thought to myself, I should probably tame this. So I shot it with a trank and then forced it to be my friend. Day 56, we went back to kill some bosses. They're really good for experience and they drop boss souls that we're gonna need later on. And I'll explain why then. We brought our two strongest trikes this time. Together we fought this Dodo Wyvern boss doing some decent damage. But unfortunately the boss got the better of both of my trikes. We took in Ashley and she finished this boss off as we had easily survived. I'm either brave or stupid because I immediately summoned in another boss, this time running it solo with our girl Ashley. We took it out with relative ease and then carried on with this 100 day journey. Day 57, we celebrated our victories by sending all the wild dinos around our base to the afterlife. Day 58, we went out on a colossal killing spree on our cosmic void worm. It's rather satisfying seeing a whole page of deaths come up on your screen. We then spotted this level 150 starfire pteranodon. And yes, we have to tame this one. I went to net it, but we were way too close for its special attack. I then returned and this time netted it, but at a distance this time. I tamed this powerhouse and then took it back to base to start breeding with our other cosmic PT. Day 59, since we are now breeding, we had to set our base up to host some newborn babies. This S plus hatchery is a good start. Then we removed all these foundations, placed some air conditioners in them, and then placed ceilings on top, and this area will now be where we hatch our eggs. We now have our first baby, although it's an alpha comet. I was kinda hoping for an omega. Later on in the day, we died multiple times. Why you ask? Well, we were trying to tame this ultimate singularity rex. Eventually we did, so that's a good thing I guess. Day 60 and day 61, we killed things. Lots of things. Day 62 and day 63, we tamed things. Lots of things. Day 64, we knocked out and tamed another unique dino. This ultimate brood, which is a cloner slash vampire trudon. Then we took flight on another unique dino that we had recently acquired. This alpha bolt which is a lightning slash spiritual pteranodon, and it's super fast. Day 65, we had received word that close to Narwhal Enema's base, there was an Omega Brutal Alpha Raptor, and I needed this creature bad. I flew right over and laid down this metal trap. Then I attempted to kite the dino into the trap, but it was so damn fast it killed me. Day 66, we then got it trapped in our metal box, but for some reason it just walked straight out. I then shot it, which was a mistake. Oh, I'm dead, I'm dead, I'm dead. We tried again and again, but it kept walking Wait, oh straight no. out of our trap. Usually this should work. So this time we changed our strategy up. We blocked off the trap with walls and the stupid idiot somehow just walked straight in. We now took our opportunity, shot it a couple hundred times and put it to sleep. Then we finally tamed this pest and named it Jamal after yet another one of my awesome Patreons. Day 67, this is Jamal, and Jamal is now our Omega boss killer. He is doing over 240,000 damage and not even max leveled yet. We then spend most of the stages killing things, trying to get some more levels in Jamal to make sure that he is the ultimate boss killer. Day 68, we had to test out Jamal against some of these bosses. We took down three big bad bosses back to back relatively easy too. While this was all happening, we had a lot of PT eggs hatched back at our base. I think like too many. Day 69, we crafted a tameable boss token that you can use to summon in a boss that's, well, tameable. I mean, I don't know if I had to explain that. It's literally in the name. We summoned in a resilient Dodo Rex. Thanks to top tier Tranks, we knocked this feathery poo colored Rex out, shoved some boss kibble up its ass and tamed it. Back at base, our baby PTs had all grown up, but we had too many, so... Day 70, in order to upgrade our Dodo Rex, we need to kill resilient bosses. So we summoned one in and started to fight it. We also brought some spare PTs that we had lying around. Uh, they died. 
Then our brand new Dodo Rex died. This is way too hard. I finished off the boss with Jamal and then later that day I crafted another token and summoned in a tameable resilient Megapithecus and quickly and easily tamed him too. Day 71 we named our big green monkey Oliver. Then we started to complete the rank up objectives. First we needed to kill 200 dinos. Then attempted the boss fights once again. This time, I brought some help, Atlas and Raz. Collectively, we weakened this boss, but because I didn't make the final hit, it didn't count towards my kill rank up. We summoned in two more bosses and eliminated them both, but I have no idea how I'm going to defeat a Titan. I then abandoned this mission for now. Day 72, I thought I would return the favor and help Atlas and Raz out with their boss fight. Or maybe I was there for the free boss essence. I tried helping out by sea spinning into the boss, but it wasn't really that effective. So I just hovered there and waited. Close to the fight, a desert titan had spawned, and once again, I got too close to it. Wow, it one hit me. <laughs> Day 73, we tamed this lethal Allosaurus. Now, lethal dinos are extremely rare, but they also have a special ability that gives them a chance to insta-kill whatever they are attacking. So yes, this Allosaurus is going to be very handy on our side. Day 74 was just another typical day in Omega. We killed this Paragon Shadow Mane, and then we tamed this Omega Water Direwolf, both summoned in from the Omega Beacon. Now, there's a lot of grinding in this mod, but I'm trying to skip over all the boring stuff, but everything I do show you has a purpose. Trust me. Day 75, I destroyed the Behemoth Gates around my base. Because of the tech shield, they're basically pointless, and now everything looks a little bit better. I also added the Creature Finder Deluxe mod, so we could target mainly Paragon Dinos and some Omega Dinos to tame. Thanks to the Creature Finder, we attacked this Paragon Rock Drake and collected its soul. Back at base, we then crafted these upgrade benches to help us get better gear in order to fight the late game bosses. Next, we set out to tame this Omega Cosmic Megalodon. We needed a decent underwater tame so we could dominate the seas. But I kept getting munched on by this pack of sharks that only saw me as fish bait. Eventually, we tamed this Megalodon and now we can be kings of the seas. Nothing can get in our way. Day 76, we went on the hunt for Paragon Souls to boost our army's power first we got this akatina paragon soul i didn't care what we got i just wanted them all then we got this saber tooth paragon soul and we could use this in pride to power him up there now was an omega firestorm rex near our base and i'm a sucker for cool dinos so of course i tamed this b arch day 77 we took jamal and ashley to fight another boss but in the fight we accidentally lost ashley now this should have been a sad moment but it just kind of wasn't life goes on but unfortunately not for ashley we then of course use the paragon soul but this time to craft a token that can rank up the tier of your dinos so we use it on pride turning him from a basic dino to a beta dino making him just that little bit more powerful day 78 we're back on the grind taming multiple dinos to grow our ever important army for the end game boss fights but then we came across this game changing dino this omega meteor rex since rexes are easily breedable and cosmics being so powerful we had to tame this beast we then tamed it and called it a night day 79 by the <laughs> grace of the art gods we found this ultimate meteor rex and it's a female to our current male so again i tamed this and now we have an epic breeding pair we then took this girl back to base set her up to breed and within moments we had our very first egg fast forward and thanks to our breeding settings we have now hatched a bunch of meteor rex babies we are hoping to get a female Omega to swap out our ultimate so we can consistently breed Omegas. But these babies still have some sort of value. We can still take them to boss fights as spare dinos. Day 80, we got into a fight with this Paragon PT. It was pretty powerful being that it was an Omega. But we knew defeating this and feeding its soul to Dante, our PT, would be an advantage for us. We just spent the rest of this day just raising our entire Cosmic Rex army. Day 81, we found out that there was an ultimate lethal Velenosaur on the map, and we already know how OP they can be. We flew over, shot it in the face, and tamed it. We named this girl Lethal Vethal. Well, I thought it was rather original. We then went to go hunt down this Omega Fairy Parasaur. Now, fairy dinos can heal your dinos in an area. So back at base, we went to heal all of our babies that had already grown up. We then separated our Rexes and lined them up so we could pump up their levels and have them ready to fight bosses quickly. Day 82, I thought it might be a cool idea to build a turret setup near our Omega Beacon to help us a little bit in this boss fights as they're definitely starting to get much stronger.
With that all set up, we then went ahead and sent out all of our Meteor Rexes ready to take on high tier bosses. We then summoned in a beta tier boss. I whistled all my dinos in to fight this boss, nervous that I might lose the army that I've just raised, but my Rexes swallowed this beta boss quicker than I could say supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. We then summoned in the alpha tier boss and the same thing happened again. We destroyed this guy rather easily. Although it did destroy part of our tech generator base, leaving it open to attack, but that's okay. We have a prime tier boss we need to eliminate day 83 our confidence was at an all-time high so we're back at it again by summoning in an ultimate tier boss this is where things got a little bit sticky and we lost quite a few of our rexes we were down to only four rexes when we finally defeated this boss i guess we reached our limit with these guys back at base i checked our hatchery and we already had a ton of fertilized rex eggs so of course we got straight to work by hatching them then claiming them and with a simple click on the s plus mutator we sped these babies growth up exponentially day 84 we took out an even bigger and better army back to the omega beacon we were climbing through the tiers of bosses and ultimate is our next tier after what had happened with the prime tier i'm unsure how this will go once the ultimate boss was summoned in we went straight in for the attack and then my entire screen kind of turned red with all the deaths we were losing rexes as fast as i could say uh, oh oh yeah now i'm dead I returned on a random spare PT we had lying around and jumped on our new lethal lethal Velenosaur. We were hoping that this Velenosaur's lethal ability would kick in when we were spraying this boss with its turret spikes. But just like a lot of my plans, this plan failed hard. Day 85, we went on another treasure hunt in hopes to find some really good gear for our upcoming battles. We are going to need as much gear as we can get to fight these late game bosses by day 100. I then asked for help from Narwhal Enema in order to take on our next boss, which will be the God tier. So we spent the rest of this day preparing for it by gathering all of their raptors and getting them healed up. Day 86, it's time to take on our very first God tier boss. We had not done this before, but we were ready. It's a oh, it's oh. Uh, yeah, so, so we died. So the boss that we summoned in was a utility boss, and we didn't know that utility bosses can only be damaged by utility dinos. When I returned to the battlefield, everything was dead or knocked out. RIP. We had then set up for another god boss fight, which might have been a bad idea, but we shall see. This time, we summoned in a frenzy god, and it hit like a dump truck. I was riding Von, trying to help out where I could, while Atlas was on his OP Reaper, and Raz was healing from his tanky fairy rock golem. This is how Omega should be played, with a stacked team. We took this boss on, chipping away at its health bit by bit, well, I don't think I helped too much. Atlas's Reaper was doing all the work. So to make up for that, I charged straight in. Leroy Jenkins! And died. I couldn't leave the boys hanging like this. So I grabbed my best dino, Jamal, and set off to help finish this boss. Day 87, we went back to grinding bosses for their souls. Killing not one, not two, but five bosses back to back with our Omega Cosmic Rex army. After destroying all those bosses, I then started to breed my own Omega Alpha Raptors. And shout out to the guys from Narwhal Enema, because they let me borrow one of their Raptors to breed off of. Day 88, we continued breeding these Raptors to gather our own Raptor Militia. Once again, we used the Mutator to speed up their growth, and even got this cool colored mutated Raptor. We didn't name him, but let me know in the comments below what you think his name should have been. Day 89, we went out to explore, in hopes that we could find other powerful dinos, and we found this Omega Vulcan, another unique dino which is a meltdown ice storm variant this is definitely a great addition to our family so we knocked it out it fell down and then we tamed this prehistoric camel we then went back to continue raising our baby raptors and scored this cool looking mutated raptor that we named blue streak because well he, he has a blue streak on him i mean that's obvious, right? We then took Blue Streak out on a fitness run to make sure he lives a healthy lifestyle. And with only minutes of being born, Blue Streak is so damn powerful. Sorry, Jamal. I think you might have been replaced by your great, 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 great grandson. I mean, 1.2 million damage is pretty damn impressive. It's now day 90 and we only have 10 days left. 
I don't think I'm going to be able to complete all of this mod. Every tier of boss gets significantly harder and harder, and I have no idea what I'm doing, but I'm going to give it my best shot. We took Blue Streak out to kill some bosses to get it to max level, and also to collect some boss souls that we're going to need to be able to summon in some god tier bosses. Day 91, we set up our very new raptor army one by one to take on this prime tier boss. We already know what happened last time we took on a prime tier, but this time we are making sure we are super prepared with the best dinos possible. Once set up, we made sure that their health was maxed out and then summoned in this prime tier boss. This time it was a very different story. This boss was way easier than last time. So of course, we backed it up and summoned in the ultimate boss, and we passed this tier with ease. Next up, we had to summon in the Omega tier, and this was a very different story. We fought this boss, but we did lose a few dinos. This was definitely our power limit reached. I then spoke to Atlas and Raz, asked them to help me out with our next tier of bosses, the God tier. We had a really good reason to fight these bosses, as their souls does something very, very epic. But I'll show you that later on. This first boss was a Rampage Megapithecus, and the boys brought their Titanosaur that did a large portion of the tanking. We got this win thanks to the help of Narwhal Enema. Next, we summoned in this Frenzy Megatherium, but this time was very, very different to the last boss we fought. I'll let the screen show why. Yep, every one of our raptors took a trip to heaven. The frenzy god was rather ruthless. I was kind of worried that we were going to lose Brulu Streak, so I swapped him out for one of our PTs, stood back, and just watched Atlas finish off this frenzy god. Day 92, oh, we summoned in this beta tier brutal god, and oh boy, this guy was powerful as hell. We really needed to kill this god and claim its soul, and I'll explain soon why. We kind of cheesed this battle by putting the boss in the deep part of this underwater trench and attacking him there. When I needed oxygen, I would just teleport back to base for oxygen, and then teleport directly back into the fight to continue. Continue. This boss took quite a while, but we did end up getting there in the end. Now, what is so important with these god souls? Well, when you feed them to your omega tier dino, as long as they are the correct variant, your dino will then become godlike and significantly stronger. And they also change their appearance to something that I think is pretty damn cool. Since we just now killed a Brutal God and Blue Streak is an Omega Brutal, we could now God like Blue Streak. And when we did, he gained this cool new appearance. I think he looks freaking epic, especially because he always had that touch of blue that he always had. Day 93, we had to show off Blue Streak's power, and now he's doing over 900k thousand damage to a boss with damage resistance. This is going to be a huge advantage when taking on our final bosses. We then helped out our boys kill this oversized golden chicken god, so Raz could god like his Omega colossus argentavis the best thing about it is we got to watch it transform seeing this pinkish green pigeon turn into a golden masterpiece was very nice i returned back to base and started hatching yet another meteor rex army as we still needed as much as we could get to fight the late game boss then for some strange reason i summoned in this utility boss i must have forgotten that utility bosses can't be damaged by my blue streak i'm an idiot so i peacefully led this boss all the way over to our underwater trench and left him there to never be be seen again. Day 94, we fought this Meteor God, so we could collect its soul to God like one of our Omega Meteor Rexes. After we killed that God, we went on to fighting the Starfire God, so again, we could God like another one of our good friends, Dante. Next, we crafted and placed down this Omega Altar, because that's the only way to summon in the super-powered group God bosses that we will fight on Day 100. It's now day 95 and we godliked our best friend Dante and he turned into this godlike golden starfire pteranodon. I'm really liking the changes they do with the skins here. It's pretty dope. Then we had to see how much power we had by taking him out to hunt some paragons and nothing can stop us now except this void worm that kicked me off my dino and this omega anki killed me. Rip. Atlas then came to visit me to show us his unique shadow main evolving into a godlike but then this happened. Well, nothing happened. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, because he is a unique. Day 96, we set up an industrial cooker because we cannot end this video without our iconic look. But until that is ready, we're moving on to day 97. Today, we had one goal, and that was to defeat multiple gods and collect their souls in order to summon our final boss for this video, a group god. Day 98, we got a fresh new haircut, and then we dripped ourselves out in my favorite colored armor, and then set up for the final two days. Day 99, we are really close to fighting the hardest god boss that we could make it to in this mod. Also, we have another god soul to feed to our Omega Meteorex. 
we go ahead and feed this dino the god soul and turn him into this dope looking god and can we just take a moment to realize how much damage this guy is really doing over 2 million damage let's go even though we had one day left to go we tried to increase the numbers of our army by hatching more rexes doesn't hurt to get more right it's now day 100 and it's time to take on our biggest foe yet the group god now we were preparing to fight the cosmic god but when we summoned it in we realized it was a scout and it flies and there's not really much we can do with the dinos we have so i just reset and got ready for a different boss together with raz we had quite a large army this is gonna be an amazing fight i hope i placed in all the god souls ready to summon in the nature god then got prepared for battle are you ready yeah i'm ready let's do this we're probably gonna die most likely. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's probably gonna die. We'll get through it. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> okay, he gets nothing. Before starting, I put Blue Streak away just in case we're gonna need him later. Then I walked up to the Omega Altar and prayed to the Nature God. Oh, epic Nature God. Please let us kill you. Oh crap, he's shaking everything. I decided to ride this antimatter stegosaurus. They have a special AoE attack that cuts the health of any nearby dino in half. Oh my cooldown's still got 30 seconds left. What an idiot. Oh no. Oh, it's a Megalosaurus. Oh, oh whoa. Oh, oh no. I died straight off the rip. Oh dude, so many raptors died right now yeah we died this was a pretty hard pill to swallow but it's not quite over yet we quickly flew back over to see the devastation everything's dead it, it one shot everything i'm gonna charge for my bag i know he's there but oh no he killed me again you got you again yes i was just getting my bag back oh there's a crystal reaper at the beach yeah hectic love it love to see that if he's so excited to play if I can get my raptor out, then I'm back in the game. You're going to take Dante? Yep. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you probably better just come back over here. He's in. He's in. He's dead. He's dead. Aww. He had no chance. I'm getting lured by a Aww. siren. I have no idea how. That's the boss. The boss is a siren too. No, he's, he's nature. He shouldn't be ever a siren. Oh, oh no, he's nature. No, no. Oh, bro. Ah, yeah. So blue streak was our last hope. We have no dinos left. Unfortunately, that's kind of it for the hundred days. Sorry, it didn't end like I hoped. Until next time, peace.